Welcome to Fair Park today. We are glad to see you. We welcome those who are listening on our Facebook page. Glad you are here and praying that we just have a blessed day in the things of the Lord. And we are going to start out with Brother Al's prelude and then a praise course to follow. Well, good morning. Welcome to church. Oh, I see we have some friends from Alabama here today. Phyllis brought her son and, and uh, daughter-in-law, and so it's uh, good to have you today. Uh, is it cooler up here, or is it hotter down there? What is it? Yeah, it's, well, it's kind of hot everywhere, isn't it? <laughs> well, good to have you today. Um, are you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Raise your hand if you're glad to be here. Amen. Look at that. All hands raised. That's a wonderful day. Uh, please stand. We're going to sing our praise chorus. It is well with my soul. That's right. Oh, I have it. got it right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I remember anyway. <laughs> See you. 
for the morning hymn. And I welcome you again. I'll do my welcoming, and we got to make the sun keep shining in here and let the Lord know we're here to praise him. Let's sing our Love Lifted Me out. Nothing else could help but love lifted me. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, let us begin our day giving our thanks to you, the one true God. Your love endures and will never fail us. And though we fall short of the mark in many ways, we are grateful for your bountiful supply of mercy and grace. Lord, as we open our Bibles today and your word is revealed to us, we pray your voice rings clear through the Holy Spirit, opening our eyes and our ears and to hear and our hearts receive our pastor's God-inspired message. And Lord, we trust in you and do not lean on our own understanding for only you will make our pathways straight. So bless us now as we lift up the name of Jesus and we pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And you can greet a neighbor. And I forgot to mention Phil and his wife there. That's uh, so 
Please greet them. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. <clears throat> the reading today is from uh, Philippians uh, chapter 2, verse 5 through 11. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of, of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. That is the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God and the Father. Well, when I sat down here a little bit ago, I just had this suit dry cleaned. I, uh, I'm amazed at how much dry cleaning has gone up. But anyway, <laughs> but I'm also relieved they gave me a bonus while I was there. I haven't wore this in the, since I got it back. Put it on, sit down in the chair, and I thought, what am I sitting on? And somehow there's a ball in the back of the liner right where you sit down. So anyway, I am, I'm anxious to get home and cut my lining to figure out what this thing is. <laughs> Maybe it's a hundred dollars rolled up, who knows? I don't, that, that was a surprise, I will say that. I wasn't anticipating that. Well anyway, good to see you all here today. Welcome visitors as well as our members and uh, I know we have several of our folks that are on vacation this week, so be Please in prayer for those who are gone from our number. Uh, but we're glad you're here and looking forward to this day in the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, what, what he has in store for us uh, through the work of the Holy Spirit. Please remember in prayer several uh, prayer needs uh, that continue on. Uh, remember, if you would, Terry Scott. Uh, and uh, this is uh, 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 Sandy and... Uh, Mary Scott's brother. So anyway, pray that God would uh, uh, bless in a special way her brother-in-law. And then Janet Lippert was taken in the hospital and uh, had an uh, issue uh, with uh, losing some blood and they, they think they got it figured out, got her back home late last night. So we're thankful she is home. And uh, then continue to pray for, uh, pray for the remainder of the prayer needs. I would ask if you would remember my daughter, Angie, Thompson. She's seeing a heart specialist tomorrow. Uh, they found uh, just another CT scan and found a spot that's not getting oxygen on her heart. So uh, I don't know if that's what that's going to entail yet, but uh, certainly would uh, would cover your prayers in that. Also, uh, Mike Edwards is still in the hospital and uh, continue to pray for him and for his recovery. And for all of these that are on our prayer list, uh, certainly each and every one very special needs to us. Any other prayer concerns we should add? Yes, Pam? Uh, Cheryl, Stapleton. Cheryl Stapleton. Okay. Uh, remember Cheryl Stapleton in your prayers, please. Anyone else? Yes, Cookie? Oh, okay, so Malachi, remember, and that's Cookie's grandson, remember him in your prayers and, and a breathing problem, is that right? Oh, oh I, I, sorry, I couldn't hear, yeah. Oh, bee sting, okay, yes, yes, uh, had another little fella that had a bee sting in the neck yesterday, so watch the bees, 
they are they are making honey, so they're busy. So uh, watch them as you're out. Anybody uh, anybody else? All right. Okay. Well, we appreciate uh, those extra needs, and uh, I think we have our prayer uh, chain starting and going on uh, online, and uh, so that's by text. So if you see something pop up, that would be from Fair Park, and just uh, remind you that we are uh, trying to reach as many as we can as quickly as we can when we have special needs that do arise. All right, uh, let's sing our prayer course today, Gentle Shepherd. We'll sing it through twice, second time. Please, if you have an unspoken need, uh, raise your hand, and we'll remember that as we go to the Lord in prayer. Same with those who are listening on Facebook today. Brother Al? Gentle shepherd, come and lead us, for we need you to help us find our way. Gentle shepherd, come and feed us, for we need your strength from day to day there's no other we can turn to who can help us face another day gentle shepherd come and lead us for we find our way as we sing it through a second time gentle shepherd come and lead us for we need you to help us find our way gentle shepherd come and feed us for strength from day to day. There's no other we can turn to who can help us face another day. Gentle shepherd, come and lead us for we need you to help us find our way. Heavenly Father, we do come to you and we seek your guidance in our lives, Lord, both our personal, our church, and yea, the world. And we pray, Lord, today that your intervention will not only sustain us, but lift us up and encourage us and remind us that, Lord, where we walk, you walk with us. We ask, Lord, for these special prayer needs, these concerns that burden our souls, for those who have been in hospitals and some who still are in hospitals. And Lord, we pray thy will be done. Lord, we ask again for your goodness and mercy and grace to fall upon our lives. And in the midst of these summer months, might we desire, Lord, to serve you and live for you and honor you before men and before women. So Lord, again, we ask your blessings this day. We thank you for your love that falls so freely into our lives. And Lord, we pray this day will be a day that is blessed by thee. We ask this in Jesus Christ's blessed name. Amen want to remind you of just some things upcoming very quickly and I'll not take long since uh, they're posted and in your bulletin. We will not be having uh, our council meeting this Monday, correct? Okay, okay. Just wanted to make sure that was right. Normally that's our time, but just due to summer months, we thought we'd give the uh, council a little break here. So, uh, but men's prayer breakfast is on on the 29th. 
at 9 a.m. And then the ladies will be having their Wednesday, or I'm um, jumping ahead of myself, they'll be having their ladies' uh, missionary meeting at 10.30 on the same Saturday, correct? Okay, so that's on the 29th, both the men's and the ladies'. And they remind you of our Wednesday Bible study at 10.30 a.m. And uh, a good study going on. Brother Ron Sanderson is leading that. And, of course, Sunday School at 9.30 invites you to come. Doug is doing a great job in, in hosting that, teaching that class. And so uh, uh, we just encourage you to support all of those activities as possible. So uh, we also uh, will share, we have on the agenda to paint our wheelchair ramp and uh, we, we have two, actually, uh, uh, porches, I guess I'd call them, uh, anyway, that we're going to be painting. And uh, so, anyway, we're waiting just for the Lord to say, uh, no more rain. So, <laughs> anyway, it's coming, but it, anyway, right now it's a little too wet. So, we'll probably not get it done this week, but uh, we do have an airless sprayer, um, I'm really hoping if I get to run it, somebody gets in front of me and I get to paint them. So that'll be fun. But uh, anyway, hoping to uh, yeah, just brighten that up and it'll match pretty much our uh, roof color. And I think it's going to look real great. So and uh, sustain that just for, for a, a good while longer. So uh, thanks for all those who will help and we'll let you know when, uh, when the time is right. Mostly, if you see the sun shining, just run here real quick, and, and we'll try to try to get that going. So, anyway, all right. I think uh, that's uh, all of the announcements. Other than we want to remind you too of our missionaries, uh, Stacy and Tim Reese, uh, and uh, their uh, discipling in the the Haitian uh, sugarcane to the Batais, I think is how they are pronounced in the uh, Dominican Republic, and and. Uh, so uh, anyway, in, in uh, the Dominican Republic and also Haiti. And then Sarah McCurdy uh, serves as regional coordinator for education in Iberoamerica and the Caribbean, which is uh, kind of Central America. And uh, so Sarah, uh, who uh, ha has a degree as a French teacher, she looks, works alongside the IM partners and global servants in the region. So we're thankful we can support these two uh, missionaries and also our missions effort. If you just give two missions on your uh, offering envelope, it, it will go uh, into the mission uh, uh, arena or general account. So anyway, thank you for all your giving. Thank you for supporting us. Had a wonderful service last week, a good uh, 4th of July service, and uh, we're thankful for that. And thankful for you guys being here today in the Lord's house. And we're praying that this day will be, again, utilized of our Lord Jesus Christ as we grow in him today. Remind you also, food pantry, uh, right outside the doors of the church on the left side, we have a food pantry. And thankful for all those who have brought. There is a list of things that we continue to, uh, kind of ongoing needs. So uh, thank you for giving, and we are helping some folks, and we praise the Lord uh, for that endeavor as well. At this time, we're going to ask our ushers if they would come, and it is time to honor our Lord Jesus Christ with our tithes and our offerings. Brother Al. <laughs>
Lord, thank you today for these who have given. Bless those who cannot and increase, Lord, we pray them in their special needs. Lord, we ask today that what we have received is used for your honor and for your glory. We pray this in Jesus Christ's blessed name. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing, Oh, Happy Day. Now, the key to this song is, Oh, Happy Day. <laughs> so, put a big smile on your face as we sing. All right. Thank you. I guess you know when I sing that word, washed, I really like to put R in it. It's washed a little better when you wash it, I think, so that's a southern thing. 
I picked that up, unfortunately, while I was down south. And anyway, hope, uh, hope today you know that Jesus has washed your sins away. What a joy to know him as personal Lord and Savior. Pam Gruber, would you come and sing for us today, please? I don't know if any of you knew George Prinzing from School of the Scriptures. He was an evangelist, and he would come stay at our home a lot when he was traveling. Anyways, he said, we're going to sing, Oh, Happy Day, when his daughter gets married. <laughs> so...
Thank you, Pam. Appreciate that song. Very good. I like that. Well, today, I may be preaching a two-part sermon. We'll see. <laughs> I, I think I've got way more material than you want to listen to, so we'll, we'll see. I want to do, speak to you today. We, we talk about Calvary. We preach about Calvary. But we forget sometimes how many instances in the Old Testament God gives us some pictures, some, some reminders, some types they are called to point us to the fact that Calvary was coming, that the cross was coming. And so I thought it would be good today if we just took a little bit of time and, and looked through the Word of God and just considered how many ways God evidenced from the very beginning of time right up until Calvary that he was preparing to send his son to die on the cross for us. I guess I could start this morning by saying to me it's, it's, it's almost unbelievable but it's quite true that there are denominations, there are groups that call themselves churches that outright deny the doctrine of atonement. And atonement means the payment of, of our sin debt by Jesus Christ. And that doctrine of atonement is at the very center of Calvary. It's what, what all the rest of our teachings uh, circle around and, and remind us of. But God presents it time and time again, and it's with that reminder. I want you to think today about how God has graciously given His Son. And I think this morning as Christians, our lives need to be fortified. We need to be strengthened, undergirded with the truth of God. And, and we need that because we must persevere against the lies of the devil, of Satan. He does what he can do to twist the truth, to misshape the truth, to try to lead you down a primrose path that will certainly take people straight to hell. And I'm reminded in the Word of God of the truth that God gave us and that we need to know our doctrine of salvation, our teaching of salvation is founded on the matter of Calvary. And based on God's Word, just what God has to say, we know that the red blood of, of Calvary runs all the way through the Old Testament. It's taught time and time again. It's reminding us that God must make a price or may pay the price that we cannot pay. And so as we see this truth of the shed blood, and by the way, the Bible says, without which there is no remission or any other means of paying for sin. When we see that, we're reminded how important the blood is. A man by the name of Tim Miller writes, he said, My nine-year-old daughter, Jennifer, was looking forward to uh, their family vacation, and she became ill. And a, a long-anticipated day at SeaWorld was instead replaced with a CT scan and x-rays and, and blood work at the hospital. And as the morning approached, the doctor told the, the little girl who was exhausted from all these tests, that she needed to have one more test done, a, a spinal tap. And I don't know if any of you have ever had a spinal tap, but they are, they are very painful. And, and so the doctor said, asked the dad, he said, will you be in the room? And he said, oh yes, I won't leave my little girl. And, and he, he just knew she needed someone there with her during this ordeal. So the doctor gently put Jennifer on her side, had her remove her clothing, and she looked at this little child there kind of in a ball, all, you know, kind of tightened up. And she said, are you all right? And, and she told her dad, I'm okay. And so she said, or he said that she buried her face in, in his. And he hugged her. And when the knee, needle went in, Jennifer cried. And as the searing pain increases, she began to sob, Oh, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. And her voice became more earnest with each word. It was as if she was saying, Oh, 
oh, Daddy, can't you do something? And this dad, Tim Miller, writes, my tears mingled with hers. He said, my heart was broken. I felt nauseated because I, I loved her and I was allowing her to go through this most agonizing experience of her life. He said, I couldn't hardly stand it. And in the middle of that spinal tap, he got to thinking. He thought about the cross of Jesus Christ and what unspeakable pain both the Son and the Father went through for our sake. Do you remember when Jesus hung on the cross and God the Father could not look at that scene any longer and Jesus realized the face of God is not upon him and he cries out in the Hebrew, Eli, Eli, Sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And it was that moment of, of that searing pain of Calvary that Jesus felt for you and for me. And I want you to look with me today as we look at the foreshadowing of, of Calvary, of, of seeing what God had said, this must come, this will happen, this must be accomplished. In the foreshadowings of the work of Calvary, we, we see the life laid down, Jesus Christ laying down his life for us. Not merely just as an example. He didn't just do us to show us how to, to live a better life. It was his self-sacrificing love. That's why he died. And as we study these types of Calvary, I, I want you to see the reasons more clearly for, for his suffering. In fact, I think had the disciples really understood the fulfillment of the Old Testament... And, and most of this was just missed by, by, by many that studied the Old Testament. There are both types and what we call shadows in the Old Testament. But they, they were giving us a glimmer of what Calvary would be. I don't think their faith would have been, the disciples' faith would have been so shaken when Jesus was taken to Calvary if they had realized what was to come. They would have understood that his death was the only way that, that man could be redeemed, that people could be redeemed. And it's for that reason that, that we, we become familiar with some Old Testament scenes and, and will be good reminders for us today to tell us. In 1 Corinthians 15, the Word of God says that Christ died for our sins. And then he adds this phrase, the Apostle Paul does, according to the scriptures. You see, God gave us a road map. He gave us some mile markers, if you please, that would, that the Old Testament passages that would lead us right up to Calvary, but most went right on past the sign and didn't see it. So let me share some things with you today as we, as we uh, uh, go down this road, and I think I'm just going to get about halfway down the road but I hope it'll help you understand some things about who Jesus is and what he has done for you. When you see the types that involve the actual shedding of the blood, you, you get a little better picture of what Jesus did for you and me. Before even the offerings were instituted, before uh, there, there was a tabernacle in the Old Testament, in the book of Leviticus, many animals were slain in sacrifice. And you turn one page in the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, and you'll see how God taught Adam and Eve to offer sacrifices. Here's a picture of what was to come. Do you remember when Adam sinned? And yes, Eve listened to Satan, but Adam followed through. He was not the leader as he should have been in his home. And instead, he partook of the forbidden fruit. And when they took that fruit that revealed who they were, they understood we're, we're without covering here. We're, we're naked. And they saw something in themselves that made them think, we're not right before God. And that's in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 27. And then we find 
The Lord clothes Adam and Eve. He puts clothes, coats of skin on them. They had tried to make, and I can't imagine how itchy and prickly that would have been, but they took fig leaves and sewed them together and made themselves a little outfit to try to cover themselves. They saw their nakedness and realized it should not be so. And when God saw them, he said, not good enough. And so he took an animal, two animals, and slayed them. And took the skins from those animals and covered them. And that's in, in the, the word of God. And, and our garment of salvation, to understand how we are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, that only comes from his death and from his shed blood. That's how we get away from the nakedness of our sin, the wrongdoing of our sin. And I think of those coats and that picture that God gives us, a reminder right off the bat, you can't do it by yourself. Adam and Eve tried fig leaves. It wasn't good enough. God used skins of animals, and there was shedding of blood to provide that covering for them. There's a second one found very early in the, New, in the Old Testament, and that's a lamb that was offered by Abel. We remember Abel and Cain. And that was Adam and Eve's first children. And, in, and we find them both desiring to do something, or at least they knew they were to do something. And so Cain goes out and he gathers fruit. He was a farmer. He loved to farm. And he brought, I am sure, the best of his fruits, the fruits that were, were uh, uh, clean and, and, and proper and, and probably tasted pretty good too. And as Cain puts them before God, God doesn't accept it. And we find that Abel goes and slays a lamb. There was the shedding of blood. And it teaches us dramatically the very, at the very beginning of the word of God. In Hebrews 9 verse 22, there it says, Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or payment for sin. And we, like Abel, can know even now that we are accepted of God. You and I can know that today because the Lamb of God, the Son of God, came and He was slain on the cross for you and for me. In both the third and fourth chapters, uh, we, we have man's way and God's way. It's very contrasted so we can see the difference between what man would try to do and what, what uh, Cain was trying to do was present his best. Here's what I've got. Look at what I've helped grow and nourish and planted and watered and took care of. And, and here's the fruit. It was his works. And you see works versus God's grace there at, as, as uh, Abel slays an animal and takes that animal and offers it to God. The fig leaves and the coats of skin, the fruit and the lamb, it tells us that man's best is, is never good enough, but that God has given his best. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 4, we read in that great faith chapter, a man by the name of Abel, recorded in the book of Genesis, He's listed in the Hebrews book as in the hall of heroes, the hero men of faith. It says, Abel by faith offered his sacrifice. Do you know, Abel, even though it was early in, in the time of history, though there wasn't a lot of examples around for Abel to figure out, he understood what Hebrews said. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. He had listened to Adam. He had learned what Adam had to share and, and Eve had to share. And so Abel took from his parents that there is a cost to our salvation. And that is indeed the blood atonement. Cain's gift. Let me, let me talk about it just for a second. It was beautiful to look at. It was fruit. It was glorious. It was pretty. It was, it was nice. But God said not good enough. It was a false gift. 
In Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 14, the Word of God says, Whoso boasteth himself of a false gift is like clouds without rain. Uh, yesterday we had some rain, but we also had some clouds with no rain in it. Isn't that right? A couple of those clouds went over and I thought, we are going to get soaked. They went right on over. They were clouds without rain. And that's what Cain's offering is considered. It was a false gift. And Jude reminds us of that, that clouds that are without water are carried about of winds. Jude verse 12 reminds us of that. And here's the truth I want you to see this morning, that religion without Jesus Christ, if you remove Christ from the truth of the New Testament, of what He did for you and for me, His death then becomes a false gift. There's another example in the Old Testament that I want you to see real quickly, and that's in Genesis chapter 22. And that is the ram that was caught in the thicket. The story is told of Abraham and his son Isaac. And Abraham, who had this son late in life, and I'm not talking like in his 40s. <laughs> he was 90 when Isaac was born. And God communicates with, with Abraham, I want you to give me your son as a gift. Abraham knew that God had given him Isaac. And he understood that. But in that understanding of that great truth, he also believed by faith he had to do what God wanted him to do. So you remember the story in Genesis 22. He takes Isaac, he gets a donkey, they get a load of wood, and they start up a mountain. And as they're starting to go up, Isaac's looking around and he says, I know we're going to make a sacrifice, but Dad, I don't see any sacrifice. And Abraham said some very wise words that we should heed today. God will provide a sacrifice. And they got to the top, and Isaac helped him build, I'm sure with stones, that, that, that little place to, to worship God and then Abraham advises, or not advises, tells him he has to do it. He tells Isaac, lay down. You're going to be the sacrifice. And the amazing thing about this passage of Scripture, so early in the Bible, it paints for us how Jesus came to this earth and willing, willingly went to the cross of Calvary. I don't, I don't see the binding of Isaac. I don't see him running away. I don't hear him screaming in, in horror. I don't see those things. What I see is Isaac willingly ready to do what his dad asked of him because he believed that's what God wanted. And we remember what happens. It's a dramatic story. Abraham picks the the, the ceremonial knife up over top the heart of, of Isaac and gets ready to plunge it down into his chest. And God sends his angel. And he grabs the wrist of Abraham and stops him. And Abraham looks over and he sees the ram in the thicket. And the ram is that beautiful picture of who Jesus is, the substitute, the one who stands in our place. He was, the ram was caught there, couldn't get away. He was there to provide the sacrifice. Isaac, the well-beloved son, whom the father spared not. He was willing to do what God said. And God said, I see your faithfulness, Abraham. But God provided the ram, which is the substitute, which God himself provided. In fact, in you, as you look in Genesis 22, there, there are, is what's called a double type. There's two things going on here that I want you to see. Here is Isaac, the well-beloved son, he says, I'll go, Dad. But then there is the ram who is, in, who is the substitute which God provides. I think all of us understand we would do better if we could. We would try to heal our sin, do away with those things that are wrong. 
But I find in all of this that God has already provided what would happen. In Genesis 22, verse 14, there is a phrase. And there are many phrases in the Old Testament that are the word Jehovah and another word that has great meaning with it. This one is Jehovah Jireh. And what that means is Jehovah means the Lord. And when you put Jireh with it, Jehovah Jireh, it means the Lord will provide. You see, Abraham had already called the Lord his provider when he said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb and a burnt offering. That was in verse 8, just a few verses before this. And here's the truth I want you to hear today. It's because he spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, that he can say with him, he freely gives us all things. That's what was done through the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to share this last thought with you, and, and like I thought, I'm only halfway through. But I will stop, I promise. There is the story of the Paschal Lamb. In the 12th chapter of Exodus, when it was time for Israel to be released, they had been in slavery, bound in Egypt. They were being abused and used by the Egyptians. They were, they were in a place where they were nothing more than slaves. They were chattel, if you please. And you come to that 12th chapter of Exodus, so full of teaching, and the greatest message is found in these words, Genesis chapter 12, verse 13, When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And that tells of redemption by the blood. Do you remember all the plagues that came down upon Egypt as God said, Moses, go tell the Pharaoh, let my people go. And the Pharaoh each time got a little scared. As the blood, uh, as the rivers turned to blood, as, as the flies came, uh, you know, as, as each plague increased in intensity, but Pharaoh would always say, nah, it's, it was just a, a freak of nature. And we find it comes then to this last one, and Moses goes in to tell Pharaoh, it's going to get serious now. And and when that happens, he goes and tells all the children of Israel to take a lamb, an unspotted lamb, the best lamb they can find, and slay it. And they cut the throat of the lamb and let the blood drain into a cup. And they took the blood and put it around the doorposts of their little homes. homes. And most of them were huts, maybe made of stone probably, but over the lintel or over the top of the door, they marked it in such a way that the blood was very visible. And what God had said to Moses is, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And that night, God sent his death angel. And by the way, we as believers should not fear death because it is God who sends the death angel to prepare us and ready us to bring us home. But this death angel comes and there all of a sudden you hear a cry in Egypt. A father goes in and sees his firstborn is dead. A mother goes in a room in another house and that son is dead. And there is at great cost to Egypt that night and for every Jew who was in their house with the blood over the lintel. There was no death because God had said the death angel would pass over. That's redemption by blood. The only means of deliverance from wrath. And it notes the need of receiving this personally. And it, there had to be something done by those who lived in that house. They had to take the lamb. They had to slay it. They had to offer it and roast it. And then they went inside and ate of that lamb that night. The Passover lamb. The Paschal lamb. And oh, don't you understand all of that is so fitting and, and right in the description of who Jesus is. They believed. 
And, and here's the thing that bothers me about this world. There are people in this world who believe there is a Christ. But they have never appropriated the blood for themselves. They've never put it over their life. They've never asked for Jesus to cover their sins. And God wants us to not just say the lamb is killed. No, it's got to be applied to your life. And nothing but the blood could keep out the death angel. Neither the throne nor the dungeon was a place of safety. It didn't matter where people were at. No politician or back alley criminal was safe if the blood was not over the door. Let me say this to you today, and, and I'm, I'm going to conclude here. Either Jesus Christ's atonement is accepted on your behalf for your sins, or you must pay for your eternal price of perishment in the lake, uh, punishment in the lake of fire. God makes things so simple. He does it in such a way that he has taken out the very hardest of, of things that need to be done. That's dying on a cross. And what that represents to you and me today is what Jesus has done for us. That's how much he loves us. And today when we think about what Jesus is to you and me, oh, how we should say, I love him so. I am so happy that he saved me from my sins. I hope today you know him as Lord and Savior. And, and if you would permit me to, next week I'd like to share the offerings and some other things that are still seen in the Old Testament to remind us again and again and again, Jesus did all of this for you and for me. We're going to stand and sing just one verse of scripture, or one verse of uh, song, rather. I'd rather have Jesus. And uh, Ruth Ella, come and lead us in that. Today, I'm not going to ask you to, to come forward. But if in your heart, you don't know if Jesus is your Savior, all you have to do is bow your head and say, Lord, apply the blood to my life. I need to be saved. I need Jesus as my Lord and Savior. If you're here today and things have drifted away from God and you're not where you should be, I hope you'll sing this song today and say, I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather have Jesus than anything. Let's stand as we sing this verse. I want you to think about what I've said today and that he provides for us all that we need when it comes to the salvation of our soul. Ruth Allen? Thank you for being here today. A little different message than I normally preach, not that I don't preach about Jesus, but I thought there were so many golden words from the Old Testament that feeds our soul, that encourages us, encourages us and reminds us that God made a plan from eternity past to provide his son for your death, for my death, 
instead of us dying, that Jesus would stay in our stead. I hope you know him today. You love him and you rejoice in what he has done for you. And I hope you go away today saying, I'd rather have Jesus. Thanks for being here today. And we thank those for listening on our, on our Facebook page and pray God blesses you and you know in your heart that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. If not, that you make sure of that this very day. We're going to dismiss in a word of prayer, and as we go from here, we'll ask you just to, uh, to shake one another's hands, uh, smile, because this was oh happy day, right? And uh, go out of here and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, if you can, come back Wednesday for Bible study, and then uh, next Sunday, hope to see you back in God's house as we go forward, loving Him, living for Him, and longing for his soon return. Wow, I think I just had a message right there. I might, I might preach that in a couple of weeks. Well, thanks for being here. God bless you. Thanks. Uh, good to have visitors here today. And just uh, pray God has blessed you as well as our membership. Has. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, dismiss us, Lord. Touch our hearts. Touch our lives. Cause us to know and understand the greatness of your gift of Jesus Christ. And that in all that we do and all that we say, it is because of you that life itself you have given us. And might we live and desire to honor your name before others. We pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you for coming.